Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time. We are still in 1981, and today we're going to talk about wizardry. The story of wizardry starts with Andrew Greenberg. Andrew Greenberg was a student at Cornell University when he began to start working on the project in 1978. Greenberg drew inspiration from earlier role-playing games, especially the 1977 game Oubliette. Fellow student Robert Woodhead would help with the programming. Wizardry was first playable in fall 1979, and it quickly became popular among the students at Cornell. However, the game would have to wait for more programming to become available before it could be released fully. That programming, the runtime system, would become available in early 1981. In the meantime, the game was extensively playtested and balanced. Robert Woodhead had co-founded a software company with Norman Serotech, named Serotech Software. Serotech Software incorporated as Sir Tech Software in spring 1981. Sir Tech quickly became the best option for distributing the game. Norman Serotech's father, Frederick Serotech, insisted that the game receive packaging and documentation. As a result, the game came with an extensive manual. The point of the manual is to act as an introduction to role-playing games while explaining some of the unique details of wizardry itself. Wizardry is a Dungeons & Dragons style computer role-playing game, where the player chooses a party of six characters. The party will then travel through the dungeon below Trebor's castle, which is a maze consisting of ten different levels. Each level gives the player more of a challenge, but also greater rewards. Sir Tech Software released Wizardry to Apple II computers in September 1981. It became instantly popular. That is a short introduction to Wizardry. With that now told, it's time to play the game for ourselves. And here we are in the game. This is Wizardry. Now before we get into it, I want to say now that we are not actually going to be playing the game today. We are going to get to character creation. I'm going to explain that a bit, and that's as far as we're going to make it today. Character creation is complicated, time-consuming, and important. So we want to get it right, but it's going to take some time. So that's as far as we are going to get today. Uh, just wanted to throw that out there now. Uh, I do have the manual in front of me. The manual is not super helpful, so instead I have... Uh, the wiki in front of me uh, as of you know recording it this is what it's going to say uh, but that can change as time goes on so let's talk about wizardry we are playing a, a later version of the game this isn't the apple II version of the game it is a re-release of the game uh, that we will talk about when um, that happens uh, but it's essentially the same game once again uh, this is a computer version of the game uh, but we haven't talked about uh, this system yet so I don't want to name it just yet we'll get there though we're very close uh, this is one of the original versions just not the actual original with that said, welcome to the world of wizardry. Let's go ahead and start the game. We're going to ignore everything that it says about alternate discs. We don't need anything like that. So let's just press enter and get in. Uh, now we are going to start in the castle. As you can see, there's a lot of text in this as opposed to pictures, uh, but we will see pictures. I'll put in some pictures from the manual, for instance, but there's not gonna be too many of those. Um, let's talk about where we are at the castle. All the manual says about is that basically this is where you start. We can go to Gilgamesh's tavern. Uh, in the original version, I believe it said Gigameshes, that it was kind of a typo there, uh, but it's Gilgamesh's in this version. Then we have the Adventurer's Inn, the Temple of Kant, uh, Boltax Trading Post, and the Edge of Town. Uh, the first letter, as you can see, is kind of separated. That's because that is the button that you press uh, to use that command. So pressing G will take me to Gilgamesh's Tavern. Uh, we actually want to go to E, Edge of Town, uh, but we'll get there in a bit. 
At the bottom of the screen, you can see our characters. And as you can see, it is empty. Uh, we don't have any characters right now. There are a couple characters that are programmed into this, uh, but we're going to ignore them and create our own characters. Uh, and that's going to take some time. Uh, we'll talk about what all these things mean later, but character name and class are going to be fairly common knowledge if you have played Dungeons and Dragons before. AC probably is too, hits might, maybe, status possibly, uh, but we'll talk about that as we get to that. For now though, we want to go to the edge of town. And here we have more options. We can go to training, maze, back to the castle. Utilities are apparently hanging out at the end of town, edge of town, and then we can leave the game. Uh, we want to go to the training grounds. That is your first stop if you want to create characters. Uh, the manual tries to explain this, but I don't think they do a good job of that, to be honest. Uh, the manual, like I said, is very mechanical, very instructive. There's not a lot in there that really adds a lot of flavor or lore to what we're doing so i'll refer to it from time to time but really i'm going to be getting a lot of my information elsewhere all right t for train takes us to the training grounds here we can create a character inspect a character or look at the roster of characters so we're going to start by creating a character we're going to need six total characters and this is where things start getting time consuming very quickly. Character creation is hugely important, um, but it's complicated and you kind of have to know what you're getting into before you get into it. You have to have a character in mind before you start because they're not gonna help you walk through the process here. <laughs> so we will create a character and we start with the name, which I think is the worst place to start, like I said, because you kind of have to have the whole character in mind before you get to the name, in my mind. Um, so I know what I'm going to be making, which is a dwarf samurai. That's where my mind is. Uh, so we'll name it after... Who do I want to name it after? We'll name it after somebody that we have talked about a bit on the on the project. Doesn't really relate to wizardry, but um, I'm going to need names. So we're going to name Gunpei for Gunpei Yokoi, a very prominent figure at Nintendo that we have talked about a few times. A uh, very influential uh, person. So we'll, we'll honor him by making a dwarf samurai after Gunpei Yokoi. That, that makes sense. Uh, you can also put a password on your character so that nobody else can use your character. Um... Useful if you have a computer that multiple people use and multiple people, multiple people are playing wizardry. You don't want your little, you know, your little sibling taking your character and letting them die, right? That's the idea here, but I don't have that problem. So we're going to not use a password. Uh, race, very important. Also not really described in the manual. For the record, race, this is what it says in the manual. You may be one of five, human, elf, dwarf, gnome, or hobbit. Race affects initial statistics and resistance to various forms of magical attack. They also, this is me talking now, they also uh, determine what classes you can be. And that is possibly the most important thing about them. Uh, we'll talk about that as we continue. Uh, but like I said, we're starting with a dwarf here. That is... That is our purpose. Uh, so we're going to then choose an alignment. Uh, now, once again, this is something that you kind of want to have in mind from the get-go. Um, you can either basically have a good party or an evil party. You can try to do a neutral party, um, and a lot of my characters are going to be neutral, but at some point you're going to want to pick either good or evil for at least a couple of your characters. Uh, samurais can only be good or neutral. They cannot be evil. So we have basically two options here. I'm going to pick neutral for my samurai, um, but really I should be picking good um, for some of the characters. This is just not one of them. So neutral samurai. Now we get to the actual statistics. Now I will point out all the differences in statistics uh, of all the different races as we continue. Uh, dwarves, as you can see, start with uh, 10 strength, 7 IQ, 10 piety, 10 vitality, 5 agility, and 6 luck. Uh, 
What this means is that my dwarf is a pretty stocky character, strong character, also a pious character, uh, but very, but slow, not good at some versions of magic, and not lucky. Um, let's talk about what each one of these do, because... Once again, hugely important to the game, but not necessarily brought up in the manual very well. I'll read what the manual says, and then we'll talk about what it actually does. Um, so what it says for characteristics of a character. Uh, strength affects combat ability. IQ and piety. They lumped them together. Determines ability to cast mage and priest spells. Vitality modifies amount of damage that can be sustained before death. Agility determines order in which attacks occur, and luck helps in many mysterious ways. None of that is very good information, if you ask me, but uh, let's talk about what they actually do. Strength, as you might expect, enhances the amount of damage that your weapon does to an enemy. Now I'm reading from a wiki. IQ, the higher your IQ, the better you will be at casting mage spells, as well as avoiding the effects of mage spells that are cast on you. Piety. The more pious you are, the more likely the gods will grant the prayers of clerics, and the more likely the gods will spare you from the effects of prayers against you. Vitality. Vitality affects how much damage you can sustain before dying. The better your vitality, the more likely it will be that you can be brought back from the dead, which hopefully won't happen, but is a possibility. Agility. Higher agility makes you faster and harder to hit, giving you a better chance to dodge attacks or avoid traps and luck. Your luck can influence any of the five other attributes in various ways over the course of your adventure. While it's not something that can be relied upon, those with higher luck generally do better throughout the game. So those are your six main statistics here. Your attribute, I believe in the original version of Dungeons and Dragons it was called abilities, which I think is a terrible name for it, but those are your stats, basically. There's also this bonus number at the end, and this is why building a character takes time and is time consuming and is important. The bonus number is any random number between 5 and 20 in most versions of the game. I believe this version, it, it maxes out at 20. In some versions, it goes higher than that. Uh, but obviously, if that's the range, 5 to 20, 6 is not very good. So... This is not going to be a character that I'm going to keep, and we'll show that later. Um, it also will show on the right what class my character can be. So as soon as I put one more point into strength, it will change it to a fighter. That is now a possibility for me. Uh, if I have 11 IQ, I can now be a mage. The not everybody can be all these things, for the record. If I put one point into piety, and I'm the right... Well, I'm the right... Uh, I have to be good or evil, so I have to be the right alignment. Then I can be a priest or a cleric, depending on whether I am good or evil. But since I'm neutral, I can't be that. Uh, then vitality, there's nothing that happens at um, 11 vitality. And then I could put all my points into agility and become a thief. Now, I don't want to do that. Uh, luck, for the record, also does not do anything. But like I said, I don't want to keep this character. So I was looking to be a samurai. That's not happening. I don't have enough points to make a samurai. Uh, so we're going to hit escape because I'm done. We're going to select a class. Uh, I can only be a thief. Keep this character? No. <laughs> uh, I will end up with two dwarves in my party. Uh, those are the ones that I, uh, well, I mean, dwarves are good. I like dwarves. <laughs> They're stocky characters, and I'm going to need stocky characters to be the fighters. Uh, if you're a dwarf, you can be a fighter, a priest, a sam uh, cleric, or um, samurai is kind of like the where you want to go. But you can also be a thief. There's a few things. Um, but let's go ahead and create, um, we'll try to make Gunpo Gunpei again. Uh, just on the off chance that this works for me. Um, ah, let's make him good. Why not? Seven points, that's not going to do it. Uh, like I said, though, if you are um, pious enough, you can be a priest. But, yeah, not, not going to be the character that I want. It is rare to get above 10, but it is possible. I believe it's 10% of the time you'll get 
a bonus number above 10. Oh, I can't, I can't select this because it's not, it doesn't allow me to, to create a class. You have to be able to create a class before they'll let you leave. Um, I think you have to use all your points too. All right, keep this character now. Um, so my purpose uh, of making the dwarves, I, I want two dwarves, I want one samurai and one fighter. So I could have left it with that, but I want a character with at least 10 bonus points, no matter what. Uh, so we're going to move on for now. I will continue to try to make my uh, dwarf samurai and my dwarf fighter, which I'll probably name Shigeru, so that we could have Gunpei and Shigeru together. After Miyamoto, obviously. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll move on and we'll try to create something else. Um, so the third one that I want to make after the dwarves is a hobbit thief. Uh, so let's go with the most famous hobbit thief of all time, Bilbo. Of course, he's a burglar, so I might call him burglar the whole time, but he's a thief. <laughs> For our purposes today, he's a thief. Uh, so Hobbit, and we want him to be neutral. We cannot have a good thief. You can only have a neutral thief or an evil thief. So neutral is what we want to do because we're going to have mostly, we're going to have good party members. All right, so seven bonus points, not going to be a character that I keep. Uh, but as you can see, this is the stats for a Hobbit. Now, the Hobbit has the most initial starting points. You have five points in Strength, seven in IQ, seven in Piety, six in Vitality, ten in Agility, and fifteen in Luck. Overall, though, you don't have too many points um, in things that are practical up front. Most of your points are in luck. I mean, this is the luckiest character, the Hobbit. Uh, for the record, this is 50 total points. Dwarves are at 48, so it's not like there's a huge difference, but there is a difference. Uh, obviously, I wanted to make a thief character, but this is not one that I want to keep. We will have to try again for a Bilbo later. No. All right, so we'll move on to the next character, which is going to be an elf bishop. I will name it after my fa my most uh, favorite elf from the Silmarillion. If you don't know who this is, don't worry about it. I can't describe who he is without spoiling at least some of the Silmarillion. So Fingolfin's his name. He's my favorite. That's all I'm going to say about that. He is an elf. Uh, now, I want to make an elf bishop. Now, a bishop is one of the higher level characters characters as is the samurai it's they're considered elite classes as opposed to basic classes uh, we're only going to make two of those the bishop is the far easier one to make samurai is difficult i need a lot of points i think i need 18 points in order to make that happen i think for an elf i only need four points in order to make that happen uh, but for a bishop we need a good or evil character um well, for a bishop, I need a good character. If you go evil, then it turns into a wizard. But I'm going to go with good. I want a good party. So, once again, not going to be good enough for me to keep the character, but fairly simple to make a bishop. It's a combination of a mage and a priest, or a mage and a cleric, depending on if you're good or evil. Uh, a mage and a priest together makes a bishop. A mage and a cleric together makes a wizard. Wizards are evil, apparently. In this game they are so once again not a character that i'm going to to keep um oh i didn't talk about the initial starting stats did i did i really only get four bonus no okay so i got seven bonus which means that let me double check my numbers here uh yes okay so this is the starting number uh, for an elf. An elf has 7 strength, 10 IQ, 10 piety, 6 vitality, 9 agility, and 6 luck. So in total they have 48 points, which is the same as a dwarf. Elves and dwarves, they gotta make them equal. They're bitter enemies. Um, we'll talk about that at some point, I'm sure. We'll, we'll go into depth. Uh, but basically this means that the elves are your, made, your magic classes. They're not gonna take too good of a hit, but I'm going to get enough points so that they can. Uh, they're relatively fast, which is something that I do want from my mage cl classes. I want them to go first. Um, that's the way that the game kind of works. And they're not that lucky, but that's okay. So that's your, that's your elf character. Not going to be something that we keep, uh, but 
you know, Fingolf, Fingolfin, the bishop, is going to be a character that I want eventually. Although Fingolfin in the books was not a bishop. He was much more of a fighter. I don't feel like that's a spoiler. All right, let's create a character again. Uh, then we have Gnome. Uh, that's going to be our next character. Uh, particularly, I want a Gnome Priest, so I I'm going to have to be good in order to make that happen. Uh, we will name... Oh, I want Fizzlewick. Fizzlewick the Gnome. That's a good name. I might change that later, though. I don't know if I want to keep that. It's just what I came up with off the, uh, on the top of my head. All right, so Gnome. And we're going to have to make you uh, good. You can't have a neutral priest. You have to have a good priest. You can also have an evil cleric. They're the flip side of the same coin. You only need one point to make this happen. So should be good. Six. Uh, not what I wanted, though. Uh, so let's take a look at a gnome. A gnome has seven strength, seven IQ, ten piety, eight vitality, ten agility, and seven luck, which makes this a good fit for a, a healing character, which is what the priest basically is going to be. He's going to heal everybody, and I want my priest to heal quickly. Uh, that's kind of important for me. So having high agility and high piety makes that work. Gnomes have a total of 49 points, makes them the second highest in the game. Uh, not that it matters all that much for me right now, because the bonus did not work in my favor. Yeah, I want to increase vitality. I don't want anybody in my party with less than 10 vitality, but we will not be keeping Fizzlewick, the priest here. All right, moving on to the last character that I want to create. I want to create a human mage. Human mage. So the mage is going to be um, kind of our... I don't want to put this. It's it's going to be our magic caster. It's going to be our offensive magic caster. It's going to be the one that's doing damage with the magic. So in total, we're going to have a samurai, a fighter, a thief, a bishop, a priest, and a mage. So we have three kind of fighters and three kind of magic people kind of summing it up. So it's kind of a balanced party that way. It's a very basic party, uh, but that's what we're going to go for here. Uh, human mage. I mean, if I'm sticking with the Silmarillion and Lord of the Rings stuff, I might as well name him Baron. That makes sense. Sure, Baron. I might change some of these names later, uh, depending on how I feel, but uh, he's going to be human. And uh, a mage can be neutral, so we'll make you neutral. Go neutral when we can. Lowest bonus points that I can get. All right, so a human has the lowest starting points of anybody else, so... We'll take a look nonetheless. It's 8 Strength, 8 IQ, 5 Piety, 8 Vitality, 8 Agility, and 9 Luck. So overall, it's a well-rounded character. just doesn't have anything strong in anything in particular. Just weak in piety, really. Humans are apparently not pious compared to other races. So ultimately, I wanted to make a mage out of this. So there we go. Sure. It doesn't really matter. I'm not keeping this character. B and no. All right, so we went through all the characters. We didn't get to keep any of them. Uh, I will try one more time to make uh, Gunpei my dwarf samurai. Do I just want to make everybody good? No, I'm going to have to have a neutral, so we'll keep the samurai neutral. Not going to be good enough there. For the record for the Samurai, I need uh, 15 strength, uh, 11 IQ, 10 piety, 14 vitality, and 10 agility, which means I need 18 points on this dwarf in order to make that happen. And it's going to take me some time to get that to happen, which is why we are... Trying so hard to get this to work. So that's basically character creation. Um... I, I know it's not necessarily the most um, entertaining part of the game, but it is very important. So I'm going to spend quite a bit of time, and when we come back, I will have my party of six characters together. I don't know if I'm going to name them the way that I've been saying. Like I said, I might change that as uh, we continue, but uh, we will be back, and when I come back, I will have that set of six characters together and then we'll talk about how to get them in my party and then we can actually adventure it'll be fun 
So that is going to do it for this part. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you laughed. I hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.